Welcome to a new episode of At The Bar Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And with me today, looking dashing, Thank Jeff. You. Appreciate it. Hollywood. <laughs> it's Hollywood. We're actually just changing it. I'm just going to be a mononym from now on, and it's just Hollywood. Just Hollywood? No more Jeff. Okay. Jeff, Jeff is, is dead. dead. Yep. <laughs> that was not worse. <laughs> not, not worse. We have a very special guest, Hollywood. Jesse's here. Jesse, how are you? Good. How's it going? Good, good, good. So, you're our first listener who wasn't you know a friend before the show so this is a very yeah, cool episode yeah extremely exciting i was saying before the show that it's it's really cool that we finally have gotten to the point where we have an actual listener coming on so yeah so you're the first one so be first <laughs> yeah it's always gonna be, be first first or last, <laughs> first or last. <laughs> um so what what brings you here to join us on the show so i was up at the uh the land uh, beer festival and saw you guys hanging out up there and decided to talk to you because uh, I also uh, I have a blog in which I talk about collecting beer bottles. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, we, we were commiserating for a little while, but you got interested in the show and started listening to it from there. How you like the show? <laughs> if you don't like it, you can, you can feel free. It's pretty good. It's, uh, it's tough sometimes to get through a full hour, uh, sometimes significantly over an hour sometimes. We, yeah. that's, we've, the, the we, know. <laughs> <laughs> we know. But I, I power through. Yeah. <laughs> we know, yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've been working on it. It's been a problem for us. Lately. A I ramble bit, yeah. a little bit when I start drinking. <laughs> yeah. but, we, but well, I'm glad you like it. I do. So I'm glad. It's always good to get a compliment. <laughs> but yeah, time is, is an issue. But we're working on it. So. What have you brought us today? I have brought you a selection of beers from Texas. So I get to travel a lot uh, where I work, and every time I go somewhere, I'm trying to add to my bottle collection, which is now over 1,400 Holy uh, bottles oh my God. and cans. Um, so everywhere I go, I'm buying as many different and unique beers as I can, uh, usually trying to get from the area that I'm staying in. Uh, unfortunately, the area of Texas I was in was uh, very backwoods, super, super south Texas, uh, as far south as you can possibly go. And there were no actual craft breweries there that I could I could ping on to, but I right. got a good selection of yeah. other Texas craft beers. Awesome. Well, I was, uh, I was actually talking to Darren about it earlier because I was like, how come I don't see much Texas beer <coughs> in the market in Florida? And apparently, and, and I know I'm going to be corrected on this because, I, like I said, this is hearsay <laughs> from Darren. Darren's very knowledgeable, but at the same time, it's not our state. But um, apparently, the breweries in Texas have to pay for their own distribution. Hmm. I've heard so, that too, yeah. So it's not... It's not like sell to a distributor and they're all of a sudden all in the market like it is in any other state. They have to actually distribute themselves. So that's why Shiner and St. Arnold come out of Texas, but pretty much nothing else makes it out of Texas because they're just struggling to even to distribute in their own state. So it's, it's cool to go to a place like that where we're not getting a lot of their stuff and now we get to try some of it here. Right. So what kind of, I mean, you kind of touched on it, what kind of blog do you, do you run? So it's... Um it's called uh, Used Hairs, Used Bottles. Uh-huh. Uh, my online name for years and years has simply been Used Hair, uh, which is a long story. <laughs> uh, but um, <clears throat> what I do is I like to talk about the stories behind going out and finding the beer bottles. Uh, for example, Texas, there was a you know a huge uh, struggle in just finding the right bottles. You know, finding a store that would sell single bottles to me in Texas, right, yeah. mm-hmm. finding a place where I could find. Uh, I ended up trying to track down a bottle of uh, Clown Shoes beer, which wasn't even from Texas, but there's right. a whole big adventure around this. And that's the kind of stuff I talk about in the blog, you know. Right. How do I go out and find these things? Cool. I mean, that's something unique that you don't necessarily get all the time. You know, you're essentially beer chasing. Yes. Yeah, but for more or less bottles. And it's it's hard to, to find a place that's going to give you one single out of a six-pack. You know, in a lot of places, that is hard. In Orlando, you can find it here and there. But even, I mean, Total Wine doesn't really do that that much. I mean, we have it lucky with ABC and Total Wine. They let you buy yeah. singles. But I don't know what it's like any other state. You know, well, so. oddly enough, I go to Tucson. I just came back from Tucson, and there was a Total Wine there. So that was just where I went. I was oh, there you like, go. I, I, <laughs> there you go. There. I know they'll have the right selection. Yeah, so you want, you want to crack one open? <laughs> yeah, do we want to start with that? Um, well, it's Jesse's yeah. beer. Let, 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 let's no, let no, go for it. Yeah. Let's, do, let's do the, uh, that one. The Tejas? Yes. The Tejas. Okay, we're so we're so aiming for what looks to be the... the the, the Bud Light of the offering. The Bud Light of Texas, <laughs> yes. Uh, it looks like it might just be that, but it's kind of a cool, I mean, 
it's simplistic. It's almost old style can, so I like it a lot. Yeah, don't um, don't mind me. I'm making a list of what we pull out so I can put the the pictures up on the uh, on the video. Yeah, sure. But we wanted to can a piece of West Texas and serve it in 12 ounces at a time. That's what it says right on the can. So I love it. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Let's crack it open. It is a it's a lager, it's so it is gonna be probably just a nice pale lager. We'll see. We'll we can uh, yeah, it's pale. see how well it stacks up with with the king of pale lagers, Mr. Bud Light. Bud Light's my jam. We all know that. <laughs> so color is definitely. Uh, I don't know, but am I supposed to be pouring the whole thing out? I don't know, it doesn't. Bother. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to be the I'm one that exactly gets us hammered. Not exactly taking it home with me. So. <laughs> this isn't going to be the one that gets us hammered anyway. No, it's going to be <laughs> the other ones. <laughs> there you go. So color is is definitely pale lager ish. All right, let me give you statistics here. We got. Uh, 4.6% uh, pale lager from, does it say where? Nope, it does not. All right. I'll keep researching and we'll get back to that. But 4.6%, so right in line with Bud Light. Right in line with Bud Light, yep. yep. I like the font. It's I white. Actually, I really do like the can a lot. It's, yeah. It's almost Simple like, but yet attractive. Yeah, very attractive yeah. can. Really cool. Look at the uh, barcode. It says in far west Texas, oh, and the that, barcode yeah. is, yeah, look, is barcode the state is of Texas. Texas. Is this, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, see, so that, gets, that gets extra points. So, smell. It's very... It smells pilsnery. It smells, yeah, 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 that, yeah. That kind of punk. Color is very light yellow. Like, it, like... It's pretty much super, identical yeah, to, yeah. A pale, yeah. uh, to a pale... So, the, the, the color's there. Smell is a lot pilsnery. So, let's go into the, uh, the tasting. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Enough. Yeah. Yeah, really enjoyable. Wasn't really surprised. It um you don't get that lager like that cheap pale lager aftertaste. No. Like not you at do all. with, you know, for me Narragansett, I get like a linger. But it cuts off really well. I looked it up. It is uh Big Bend Brewing Company. Yep, Big BBC. Bend in uh Alpine, Texas, and it says in far west Texas. Far as west far west, west as you can get. I actually really like that. That's a, that is a solid. That's a, <laughs> yeah. Call it a lawnmower beer. That's a really good lawnmower. That's I think beer. the best lawnmower beer I've ever had. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Which is funny because before we were we were talking. Now like, it's Texas. I'm gonna start saying hell yeah this episode. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> you know, before we were like, oh well, that looks like the cheapest one. We'll start with that, and I'm like, all right, this is pretty good, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and this one, like we said, it's a very clean and simplistic, but really nice looking label. Some of these cans have great can art on them. So oh, absolutely. It's gonna be, uh, this, obviously, the packaging, we're judging a book by its cover, but we thought, oh, this looks like it might be the most <laughs> this simplistic looks, this one. This looks you know? cheap. Let's try it. <laughs> and then turns out it's a really good yeah. beer. Jesse, what are you thinking? Good job, Tejas. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm normally actually not that big into to standard lagers. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're really not my jam. Um, as dark and, and complex as you can get, you know, we have these scotch ales. Yeah. Things like that are where I'm normally going. I mean, this is... I mean, imagine tailgating with that beer, dude. Like, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go on a limb, and that is probably the best pale lager I've ever had. All right, let me <laughs> let me finish let me finish the description because this is why it's the best. Okay. Because they made it with some pretty awesome ingredients. So, it is. Uh, let's see, twelve ounces at a time, and it's brewed with a handful of hops, barley, a dash of rain clouds and lightning. <laughs> Some sass and a pinch of the West with a little Pancho Villa. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the best description I like, we've had. I like rain clouds and lightning. Rain clouds and lightning. <laughs> well, at least they made it with some lightning. Yeah. So Glad somebody figured out how to bottle lightning, or at least can it. O- only in the only in Texas. I will give this the top two uh, best pale lagers I've had because okay. actually the uh, the Ballast Point I think it's the long long fin lager something like is that yeah, yeah, yeah really really good but this is right there with it so from one to ten or one yeah one to ten for the style for the style for style I give it like uh, an eight point eight for the style for style for, for being a pale for, lager for if I was if, for a beer yeah like a seven two because I would never okay. drink a pale lager at a bar just because unless it's like Poonapoo day, and I just drank nine stouts. I will, at that point, it's situational. Right. You know, Jesse, what are you, you going to give this? For the style, 
Uh, you know, considering that lagers aren't normally my thing. I mean, for this style, I'm going to give it like a 9.5. It really is um, the best, okay. one of the best lagers I've ever had. Yeah, I'm in line with Jesse here. Like, that is the best. It, it's stylistically it's, is great. It's the best pair of lager I've ever had in my entire life. So 9.5 for sure. I'm gonna conserve I could time. picture myself actually Ordering drinking that. this on a regular basis. Oh, absolutely. Basis. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would order at a bar uh, if I wanted something, uh, you know, light and, you know, refreshing. Oh, I didn't say refreshing. for Darren. We'll start doing a little sample for the house. Okay. <laughs> we don't have to let him know that we drank that one. So. Darren, we didn't drink that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, I can't. I wish I can get that so I can tailgate with it. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll bump my score stylistically. I'll give you guys what exactly you nailed at nine five. But I just couldn't in my heart give a pale lager at nine five. Yeah. But for the style, <laughs> within the style, that's within yeah. the style, it yeah. is it is great. It, it nailed it. So I'll give it to it. Cool, cool. So uh, I guess we just continue with the cans. Sure, they're right there. I mean, do we want to know what we have in bottle and decide if you want to possibly crack one of those? Sure. Because I inventoried them. All right, so four of them are from Real Ale Brewing. We have an Oktoberfest, uh, a Wee Heavy called Oof. Real Heavy, and uh, that's a bomber, so we maybe don't want to do that one <laughs> just because okay. I'm probably already going to be tipsy after one more beer. Um, the Brew House Brown Ale and Devil's Backbone Belgian Triple Oof. are all from Real Belgian Ale. Belgian Triple. Oof. And then Elda M., <laughs> Which actually is, in my opinion, the coolest bottle art of the of the five that are in there. Really cool bottle uh, is a milk stout. We're doing that one. All right, so we're milk gonna do stout. L to M milk stout. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And then I heard a uh, ooh for the Belgian triple, so the maybe Belgian we'll triple, do that yeah. one later. Okay. We'll touch the heavier ABV stuff <laughs> as I'm getting more drunk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Stick with the cans for now, though. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, do uh, so. Uh, we had a, a pale lager. What else we got? We got. Uh, I see a imperial stout. So this Imperial Stout, I love the can art on. So I don't let's know. do that one. Yeah, let's do that this one. This is a cool. I mean, it's got like a little dog on it. I like this. Is tag. like this is like grabbing presents under a Christmas tree. Like it, I like this. Well, <laughs> it's funny because there is a Christmas beer in here too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is Carbach Brewing, I believe that's how you say it. Um, and it's three-legged lab. And now that I just read that it's called three-legged lab, I noticed that the little dog on the label only has three legs. So now it's kind of a sad label. <laughs> 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 But uh, really, I mean, this is, to me, I think that's one of the cooler can arts that we've yeah, seen. Yeah, I'm digging it, yeah. Yeah, and Carbach seemed to be pretty big in the bars I was going to there. You know, they seem to have a lot on tap. Well, yeah, I, I mean, look at some of their, the can art on them. The can art's really cool it, on their beer. I, I think it's one of the better ones I've seen in terms this, of design. Look at this Kolsch one. That's a cool can art. Yeah, I like, like that. Straight out of the 70s. Yeah, I think I think can art is is a dot, is some that brewery should really get right. Oh, have you seen uh, the? There's so many plain ones. What's the one that does um, the brown note and? Oh my uh, gosh, yeah. Um, brown and note. What a great name. Brown note and uh, Rico Suavin, and they oh, have, oh, their oh, can art is unreal. It'll come back. I'll look it up now as we open that. So that can't that can't school. Tripod approves. <laughs> So, Jeff is pouring now. All right, so we got... He's got a more impressive head than the longer did. Yeah, it's very... I mean, the bubbles are very... You can see the, each individual bubble yeah, in there. Yeah, it's pretty... It's cool because a lot of Imperial Stouts don't do that. Yeah. What's the... Um, ABV, the yeah. stats? Let yeah. me get you the stats here. Let me top you off, though. And then I'll get you all the stats. Damn it. <laughs> you topped off my fingers. I hope, <laughs> I hope that this one is Let me top you off. Hey, Mitch, can you, um, get so the the brown note um, beer. Um, the L to M milk stout. Tell them it's, it's one of the bottles in there. It's uh, against the grain. Yes. Awesome yeah. can art. I'll, I'll, we'll throw that up there. The, the one, with the, 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 one with the brown ale, it literally has a, a dude poop in his pants on the can. And yeah. it's nice. and the a brown hilarious, note. like, cartoony <coughs> sketch. It's yeah. awesome. So the head retention on this is pretty solid, as Jeff's looking for the uh, the statistics here. It's good. This is straight out of Houston, Texas. Houston. Ooh. It is tripod approved, but it's spelled like pod, like a paw. Yeah. Oh, pod. Yeah. Um, Witty. <laughs> In case you're wondering, you shouldn't drink uh, Imperial Stouts if you're pregnant. So that's on the can there. 
No stats there. No really. stats. No oh, stats. that's not good. Come on, Carbach. Hold on. You gotta be doing. You gotta be doing some stats. They, they gotta have ABV on it. That's a rule. This is Carbach. Did they hide? I so. have. I. When you got fourteen hundred bottles and cans, and you're trying not to buy the same stuff over and over again, Make you eventually have to have an Excel sheet with everything <laughs> you have. <laughs> the in real it. deal. So um, I have it in an Excel sheet you here. And Aaron can try that. It's an Imperial Stout by so. Carbach, out of Houston, Texas. So pretty well, much, I'm, I'm, I can probably get pretty close with it. The head retention's there. It's it's pretty uh, it's pretty black, or uh, extremely dark brown, light beige. Eight, eight four eight five probably. Light beige or tan head on it that's sticking around. Um, the smell on it. Unless they're unless they're incredibly talented, that's probably about an eight five. So it's it's pretty strong. It's a nine point three. So okay. they're pretty talented because yep, yep. they hit it pretty well. You don't really get any kind of booze. The, uh, to me, the aroma is kind of lacking a little bit. But it has a real. It's roasty. You smell roast. I smell really like almost roasty, like a leather. Pretty uh, smoky. A little smoke. Yeah. But nothing. You don't get anything right right away. You have to kind of there is kind of have to find it. Almost a non-existent nose on it. Yeah. Um. Maybe it's the missing leg. Oh. Isn't this? A, I think that's such a cool bottle. Yeah. Oh, that is good. Wow. That, this beer is all flavor. Yeah. It's all yeah. flavor. You've had it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I tried it to You're tell sneaky. you to guess what the ABV was, and then I was off by an entire point of ABV. You can taste it. I taste like <clears throat> like, like the fake chocolate, like the powdered chocolate, which is becoming more and more prevalent in the chocolate styles we drink, at least here on the show. But I get a little, a little bit of booziness, kind of like that chalky chocolate. It does have um, booze in the finish, yeah. yeah. I mean, eight five wasn't exactly like calling it a bitch beer. It, it it's a high ABV, so I get a little bit like a fig or like a plum, but I think it does have it does have a sweetness to it. There's a the sweetness end, to it, yeah. Because it starts roasty and smoky, and then it ends with that chocolate sweetness. I think it's probably just the malts they use is, is yeah. a chocolatey, caramelly kind of malt. But it leaves but, you that with that like powdered chocolate residue. Yeah, that just chalkiness. Like, like Nib, Nib Smuggler did. Yeah. It's noticeably lacking in rain clouds and lightning, though. Yeah. yeah. Right? Not, not, not so much of that. Come on, Carbach. <laughs> Get it together. You're in Texas. All yeah. there is is rain clouds and lightning. Not even a description like that on the bottle. There's like no ABV on no, it either. No cool description. I'm going to be there. honest with you. Because Tejas well, that one has rain ABV clouds and lightning, it. they became one of my favorite breweries. Yeah, I actually like the Tejas more than this one. I'm going to go on a limb and say it. Mm. I don't know. I, I would still take this over the... The lager. Recycle, damn it. It was a really good lager, but I would still take I this will, over Does there. it say recycle, damn it? On yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> All right. So they did something funny on the recycle, can. Recycle, damn it. I think it. everybody should have something funny on their can always. Yeah, it says, uh, uh, now I can't find it. Yeah, it says right there, recycle, damn it. <laughs> right there next to the barcode. So, Jeff, if you give this from 1 to 10, what that smells? I'm a imperial stout connoisseur of sorts. This They're is your my jam. favorite style. So this is a... Uh, it's lacking in nose, which I'm, I view as, as one of the more important pieces of a beer. And then also the body's light for a 9.5 or 9. What was it? 9.4? 9.3. Nine nine three. Nine three. Yeah. It's yeah. really light bodied, which an Imperial Stout, you almost want it to be thick, like real thick, okay. motor oily. So I'm going to give it like a 7.2, 7.3. Okay. Jesse, what are you, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, again, in comparison to the lager, uh, it's much better, but we're going within style. Yeah. So as far as just imperial stouts, I'm not really sure what makes something an imperial stout as opposed to a regular stout. Um, ABV and the amount of ingredients <coughs> that go into it, more or less. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if there's more ingredients going into it, I would expect it to be more complex in flavor. Mm -hmm. And this isn't complex in flavor. It's right. a pretty straightforward flavor. Yeah. Uh, so within style, I'm thinking... Seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, body, I actually like the body on it. I think the body's there. No, Really no aroma. And I didn't like the, the chalky chocolate aftertaste. So I'm, I'll probably break between you two. Probably do a seven, two. Okay. Uh, definitely a below, below C minus in, in terms of, in terms of beer for the three legged. I mean, it's definitely was missing something, right? <laughs> yeah. Dad joke. Is missing a leg. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is, I'm digging the art on it. I should, I should probably make a list here. 
Are you gonna? Are you, have you been taking pictures of these guys? Or no, I'm, I'm writing them down. Them right, I'll find them online, like I do every other time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to just take a picture? No. 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 Gross. So this is the Elda. Elda M. Elda M. Milk Stout. Oh, let me give you stats. <laughs> right, you you guys talk. I'm gonna okay, find stats. so <laughs> filler space. So so color here. My head went away. Yeah, the, it didn't. It didn't it develop didn't hold very well. As well. I watched it as it was being poured. It, when Never developed one. Away, yeah. But the color is a lot like the uh, the the Imperial Stout. Uh, it's actually more. Looks almost like soda when you hold up to the light, kind of like. Yeah. Like a like a Coca Cola, like a Coca Cola <laughs> color, yeah. I can't see the sun through this beer. All right, I hold it up to the sun, so it's pretty dark. So yeah. it, milk stout brewed with ten different malts, rich flavors of roasted and chocolate malts with a hint of coffee. The stout is creamy and sweet, but not overly filling. Best to let the stout warm up, which is true of most stouts, but at least they put it on the bottle. We're not doing that. This one also, <laughs> uh, this one also, I don't know if it's like a Texas thing, but they made their barcode look like a bottle. Hmm. So I think it's a thing to just make your barcode. I, yeah, cool I think there. everyone we've seen their barcode is like pretty unique. So this one has uh, it has the state of Texas Except kind of one. in the background, uh, the state of Texas like a map in the background with a ship in the middle. It's real cool bottle art. I like it a lot. Um, it says something about the Caribbean on there. Yeah, I like I kind of like the fact they said ten malts. We'll see how this kind of stacks up here. But appearance kind of looks like. Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Uh, smell. Complex smell. Way better yeah, smell yeah. than the, the Imperial. Yeah, that's what 10 malts will do for you. I mean, you're getting, I get a lot of fruit fruit notes to it, like darker fruit, like licorice a little bit, like maybe dates. like a plum. That might be that creamy, yeah. sweet kind of. Yeah. Because I'm not getting a lot of coffee, even though it says a little bit of coffee. I'm not there. getting coffee either. Getting a lot of sweet. So let's, let's it doesn't go. smell as roasted as the other one. The other one, all you got was roast off. Yeah, the smell. yeah. I don't really get this one's very sweet. One. Jeff smiling from ear to ear. I tried it. It's good, <laughs> <laughs> and it is sweet. It does taste like there's fruit in there a little bit in a weird way. Oh yeah, that is that's, really sweet. That's the best one so far. Yeah, I'm a sucker <laughs> for milk stouts. That's really nice. I'm think I'm sure it's like Bourbon County to where if you let warm up all the, the different malt characters this come out is, a little uh, bit more, you know. I'm actually going to leave a little bit uh, when we do the Belgian triple, and then I'm going to try it after it warms up a little bit too, just because to, it advises it. Um, but uh, it's no label brewing, which is ironic since they have a cool label. But um, <laughs> they're in Katy, Texas. K a t y. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, is that Katy? Katy, yeah. I think no so. idea. We'll be corrected. If we're wrong. <laughs> Somebody will let us know. Yeah. yeah, but no label brewing. Elda M. Milk Stout. They're really no, impressed. I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm been impressed, impressed with so Texas far. beer so far. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I didn't know what to expect because, like I said, we only really get St. Arnold's and, and Shiner. And let's be real, Shiner is Shiner. And, and we don't St. really Arnold's get a whole lot of St. Arnold's. Good, we don't here. get a ton of you it. You have to really find it. Um, but I wasn't expecting a whole lot because you don't hear a lot about Texas beer. Yeah, yeah. And then it's probably just because it's stuck in Texas. Yeah, well, probably if they have to pay for the distribution. Although Shiner birthday. Which one? Like 105. I don't know, whatever last year was. The Hoppy Pilsner? No, they have a new the, one out this the year, chocolate don't they? cake. Oh, my God. It was freaking cake. good. I loved that beer. I literally drank it for a good two months straight. Yeah, Shiner's 105 years old. 106, I guess, this year. Yeah. Have you had the the birthday cake, Jesse? The I don't think I have. It wasn't. I it was 2014. Super, super, it was 2014. Super, super like oh, rich. Like chocolate. Yeah. Like, like cake batter. Yeah. Super rich. Unbelievable. Yeah. It was uh, their 2014 beer, their birthday beer for that year. I found year. you, you Last get year very was, good uh, at figuring out who the actual brewer is when you when you have to re resort to an Excel sheet like this because Shiner is not brewed by Shiner. It's brewed by Spetzel Brewing. So, really? Yeah, the name of the company is Spetzel Brewery. Spetzel? Yeah. So they're German. So I had their true. birthday Close beer. Close I think their birthday beer was older. I think the birthday cake one this year is newer. I don't think I've it was. That one this yet. past year was their Hoppy Pilsner, which I didn't have because I was turned off by Hoppy. Yeah. The year before that, 2014 was their birthday it's cake. It's like ironic, a Hoppy Pilsner, because Pilsners are basically just already a Hoppy Lager. Yeah. yeah. So then you make an extra Hoppy Pilsner. Aren't you just kind of making an IPL? <laughs> more or less, yeah. Yeah, more or less. But this was super complex. Like, I'm really liking this a lot. You know, and I know when we had uh, back to Red Cypress, their uh, 
uh, the death roll. Death roll. Like Lots his of malt. his his yeah. that beer was a lot like this one. Very I don't complex, think he used, and it was a malt build that yeah. made it made it so no added flavors, no, no added anything. Nothing. I actually was just at the brewery last week and I talked to him again about it. They've upped the ABV since we tried it on the show, and it's a little full, a little bit more full bodied. Honestly, better than it was when we already when we loved it. it. Yeah. So it was. It's a great beer, but that's. It, it seems to me like we went the wrong way in a lot of ways in America, where we went with like throw as many different kinds of hops in a beer as you can. And everybody's like ten different hops, and then it just tastes. Oh, like, way cool! Oh my god! It tastes so bitter that yeah. you don't even taste the differences between them. I feel like a complex malt build, you actually taste the complexity of the malt better than you would in hops. Without having to add, you know, fruit or any kind of, right. you know, flavoring to it, adjunct whatever. Um, I think that's that's a, might be a craze that hasn't maybe caught steam yet. You know, instead of building a hop profile, you build a malt profile, and well, the malt's just very. I feel like hop is, and people are going to fight us on this all day, but yeah. I feel like hop, each strand has different tastes, but they're all straightforward tastes. Like, I, it, your, your tongue can only process so much bitter. Yep. So once you get hit with it, your tongue doesn't have the ability to adjust it to whatever it. complexity there is right. to follow. So when you have... When you have a seven different wet hop IPA that has a hundred and something IBUs, you get bitter, but you don't get, you know, if they use eight, if they use eight hops and they all have a citrus profile, then you get citrus bitter, but you don't get like this one's lemon, this one's lime, this one's orange, this one's pear. It's hard to pick thin, out you know? certain hops when right. there, there's so many in a beer. But when you do it with malt, it almost like lines up where they take turns playing off your palate where like. And I always feel like it starts with roast, smoke, then chocolate, then caramel, and then it finishes sweet with whatever the sweetest, lightest malt is. Right. And it's like, I, I, I could be wrong, but that's the way it seems well, to play your, on your palate. Well, that's how your palate takes it. Right. Right. And, and, and I feel like the reason that may not have taken off yet is because for, for hops, it's very simple for people to break down. They get, you know, it's, it's bitter and either citrusy or piney or grassy. And you can see, you know, I like this or I don't like that. It's right. very, it's very simple. Whereas with the, with the malts, it's you know, the average person is not going to be able to tell you the difference between any kind of yeah. malts that they're. And, they're looking and you at. know what? That actually brings up a really good point because if you know you like <coughs> citrus IPAs, you're you know that's one style of IPA. There's no like, there's no like border jumping in the IPA world. So like in malts, it's complex. But you might not know, like, okay, I like the caramelly chocolate ones. I don't really like the nougaty sweet one, you know. So, like, right. if you do a complex malt build, it might offend some people. But with hops, it's like you're bitter, you're not bitter, you're citrusy, you're not citrusy, you're piney, you're earthy, you're whatever. But you know which IPAs you like, and that's yeah. and maybe that's the beauty of it is that they're segmented to everybody can find something they like. Yeah. I was actually able to go through, uh, like ABC tends to have the, the beer tasting events. You buy a little glass for $5 and, you know, go around and yeah. try all the beers. And um, it was, seemed like every brewer there had mostly IPAs. And I, I made a, a really enjoyable evening out of just going to every one of them going, give me the IPA that you give to people that don't like IPAs. And they're, they're all so proud of it. They're, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got to try this one. Oh, this man, is the best, yeah. the best IPA this here. One, yeah. yeah. You know, and... and some worked, some didn't, but you know, I did a lot better than if I had just walked around grumbling all night about IPAs. It's just, that's, it's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just bitch the whole time. I, I, wouldn't, that too. Yeah. I wouldn't hate it if they just if, if having an IPA wasn't the the industry standard. Yeah, because there's yeah. there's got to be brewers, and you know which ones they are because their IPA is lackluster. Yep. Who are only brewing an IPA because the market calls for them to have one. And it's like, that's not what their passion is. That's not what they're passionate about. There's there's Belgian-inspired breweries in Florida that are brewing IPAs because they know they have to. Yeah. And it's like, so now what, we have 8,000 subpar IPAs in the world? IPAs pay the bill. Yeah. Pay the rent, you know, sometimes. Not if they're sometimes. lackluster. People buy them just because it's it's the neighborhood, you know, brewery. You no, know, it's down the street, you know. I could go there, drive there five minutes, get there, have, you know, average beer. Or I can drive half hour to 45 minutes and have better beer, but then I have to figure out a way to drive back. But like we just talked about the other day when we were at Bowegan's, you would drive longer to get to Bowegan's than you would to get to another, another local brewery that was closer right. because mm -hmm. their beer is better. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the problem with everybody having an IPA is just the being the local brewer doesn't matter anymore because there's even in what we have self-proclaimed as the butthole of craft beer in Florida, 
there Orlando. Are, there are like <laughs> any night I want to go to a brewery, there's like nine options for me to go to, and I'm in I'm in a bad craft beer market. Yeah. So like I'll drive longer to go to Red Cypress or Bowegans than I would to go to 1010. That's right down the road from my house. Right. We need to revisit 1010. We do because I've heard they've done some good things and I haven't yeah. gone. I feel bad talking smack, but I'm sure they're good. I'm sure. So I, I let mine warm up. The uh, Elma May. I liked it better cold. I'll just. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll claim that. Yeah, I like it better. I liked it better cold. Jeff from oh, yeah, zero to right. ten. The Elda May. Elda M. Elda M. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Asterisk. <laughs> milk stout, complex malt build, good nose, good body, bad, bad uh, head retention, but the body was still there and the nose was still there. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it like a eight five for the style. Okay. Eight five. Yeah. Average B. Uh, yeah. I mean, like we've said before, I think like anything in the eights is better than average. And then anything in the sevens is your average, average beer. Yeah. Anything that's below a seven five is bordering on crap. Right. Jesse, what are you thinking? Uh, again, this is this is difficult for me because I'm more a connoisseur of the bottles than a connoisseur of the beers. So coming up with the the ratings, right. you know, <laughs> I'm certainly not going into the uh, double digit decimal places like you guys sometimes do. No, we won't. Uh, we, yeah, we don't do that. But uh, <laughs> only one place. <laughs> uh, for the style, again, there was no head retention at all. They didn't even right. develop one. Uh, but there was a really good smell. Um, for the style, I really enjoyed what I was drinking. Yeah. And that's about the best I can do with it. So, um, you know, an eight and a half. Another eight five. Okay. I liked it a lot cold. Um, with that said, I would probably give it above average compared to all the milk stouts just because of the malt build on it. I'm thinking 8.8 .8 on this one. Cool. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. What's really cool about it is it's not like Breckenridge Vanilla Porter, which isn't a milk stout, but, you know, it's not like a left-hand milk stout where there's, like, a lot of flavor that you don't think actually came from the malt in it. Yeah. This, you can tell, is, is a complex malt build, so yeah. they did a good job with it. Yeah. I mean, it could – I mean, head retention, maybe it was shaken during transportation or a little bit older. You, you never know with, with bringing beer back from another location, but I would give it an 8.8, though. You, did you fly it back? Yeah. Yeah, I actually uh, I have a blog post where I talk about that kind of thing. It's it's very interesting. Uh, check bag, wrapped check in bag, jeans. Wrapped in jeans. <laughs> uh, what I did learn, that. this actually this particular trip in Texas was the first time I had a bottle. It didn't break. I've been expecting a bottle to break the whole time. I've been I've been checking bags with bottles in them, but it didn't break. But what happened was uh, I think the cap wasn't sealed right, and it just leaked all over everything. So I had... It was a bomber that had happened to, and I had maybe a half inch of beer left in it. My rule, I have to at least taste the beer in order to keep the bottle or can. Yeah. And, you know, there was still a taste in there. I'm sure it was going to be horrible, but I, I powered through you know it just what? to know that I could still keep that bottle off. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't waste that trip. I'm sure a, a good amount of what came out of there was probably due to the pressure differences between what's inside that bottle and then the fact that you're not in a pressurized it's not a yeah, pressurized but I do that all the time. Cap, I, I, and all yeah. the bottles make it. They usually do, yeah. Well, what I noticed after I got it home, I when I bought the bottle, I didn't really think anything of it. But in the center of the cap, there was a really well-defined circle pressed into the cap. And I thought it was just like the way they were making this cap. Right. I, I think because the bottle failed, I think it was just the cap had gone bad. And right. I've seen other beers from that same company now uh, that didn't have that depression in the cap. So I'm sure I just... Did yeah. a really piss poor job of picking that bottle. No, and, uh, what people I read online, people put in Ziploc bags, and like I never thought of that. I've started doing ever. that since, like, since that it's happened. It's a dumb. It's like a dumb that. idea. I'm like, wow, I just never thought of putting it in Ziploc bags. Never crossed my mind. I've also been told, like you know, put it in a Ziploc bag and put a diaper in there, you know, so it'll soak up any liquids. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not spending a lot of money on diapers to put it in my check yeah. bag because yeah, no. you know. I know the TSA is watching. Yeah. And they're uh, going to think you're a weirdo if you got beer diapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beer diapers. <laughs> is he going to drink that? or? <laughs> this is the, uh, the milk so this one is by, who is it by, Jeff? Real Ale. This is. Uh, uh, how do you spell that? R E A L. Okay, real as in real. Okay. As in real. Real as in real. <laughs> Not real as in fishing. That's a. Try and preserve your label here for you. So that is the. What's the name of it? It is the Devil's Backbone Belgian Style Triple. 
uh, unfiltered triple, actually, so and unpasteurized. I will say every bar I went to in Texas, uh, real brewing uh, Fireman's Four seemed to be like on every tap. You know, everybody had it. Everybody was ordering it. it seems to be a, a standard there. I'm sure there's a whole nother like market over there that like, oh man, Cigar City, what's that? We have real ale brewing. Yeah, this yeah. Is, you, you go know, to a bar there and you're gonna. It's in their get own Carbock world. Or yeah. Real. Those, yeah, that's what you're gonna get in any bar. Um, so it is working in the hill country from a foundation of time-honored brewing tradition. Real ale believes minimal processing produces maximum flavor. Hmm. Okay. So that's, I respect that. That's their their simplistic yet complex. I'm right again. <laughs> <laughs> so the label isn't as uh, yeah, that's visually the, super Belgian attractive. Knows. Yeah, super Belgian. How can you tell, Jeff? Because they're simple yet complex. <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely get a lot of Belgian on the nose. You can tell. The minute you smell it, you're like, this is a Belgian. A lot of yeast, fruit, and we're, good. we're just going to go for it. I like it. I'll that be honest. I'm kind of Belgian out, but uh, well, you guys just had a big Belgian event. We've been the last two, two weeks. Belgians yeah. here. Belgian <laughs> two weeks yeah. are a treat for me. So nothing but two weeks of Belgians, Belgians. and sours. And yeah. sours. I'm soured out to be I honest was, with you. All the Cantillons. Oh, I'll take Canton all day. I had a trip to the Netherlands, and that was just sours same thing. all day. It was, no, it was, it was Belgians. Belgian mm-hmm. trip. Mm-hmm. Triples, doubles, quadruples, everywhere. Yeah. Every bar you go into, that's what was on tap. I the only style I can just continuously drink without getting tired of is an imperial stout. Otherwise, I that's get so I fade them. I fade them so out. Crazy. Fade them out. Yeah. For me, that's that's Scotch ales for some really? reason. Really, really Scotch ales. I can. Should we have busted open that we have you? <laughs> Maybe we'll we'll think about we'll it. See what happens later. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one, Belgian, it falls off on the mouth. Mouthfeel falls off, you know, in terms of flavoring. What's ABV on this? Because it doesn't taste super high. Doesn't, yeah. The so bottle art is, man, it's all right. Mm, less than, less than. Yeah, it's art, like, right? uh, it's pretty typical bottle art here. It has a little devil on it and, and a little tiny devil. but Regular barcode, man. Uh, yeah. It's an 8.1. 8.1. Okay. Shit, they hide it pretty well then. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it tastes like a six and a half, seven. Yeah, it tastes yeah, it tastes a lot lighter than what it is. So, you know, we talked about a little bit about you know, not necessarily being a connoisseur of the beer, and one of the things that always puzzled me is you know the difference between a a double, a triple, and a quadruple, especially when it comes to flavor. What the heck am I supposed to expect out of that? Uh, well, that all comes down to the sugars used when they brew. So, um, I believe a a, a triple is. I'm gonna. It's been two years. I'm not, since I yeah, I'm not. Know. I'm not 100. I don't, I don't feel confident answering. One that, of them has that. candied sugar. One of them has like. I don't even know about that. Brown sugar or something, and one of them has regular sugar. I Someone think it's. will correct you on the website. Yeah, and I don't feel like people will be like, "You're stupid, <laughs> guys." I'm sorry. I'm so dumb. It's been two and a half years since I've gone through beer school. I forget about the. Belgians. I, I knew it, but I don't. Belgians. I don't really go for Belgians all, all that much. I can't. I can't remember oh, what I, exactly. I, love the is. I, love I mean, obviously, I believe quads have a candy sugar, and I, I think that's the reason they're higher ABV, darker beer, and a little heavier. And I think that's the de- that I ninety percent on that. But then the other two, I can't really give you a difference. Yeah. Well, well, I'll I'll look it up and put it in the the video. I'm not sure either. Fair enough. But. This was this was all right. Enjoyable. It's light. It's enjoyable for yeah. a triple. It's. It, would I order it? No, probably not, but I don't really drink Belgians all that often. Um, and if I do, I'm going to drink a Belgian Belgian for the most part. Yeah. Uh, unless I'm going with my boys from Weyerbacher because they crush some Belgian styles. But other than that, even Oma Gang, I could give them a chance, but I don't really venture out. I'm not, I'm not big on Oma Gang. I don't venture out too much into American Belgians. I just don't think they do it right. Yeah. Jesse, what, do you, what are your final thoughts before we go into the uh – yeah, the, oddly the enough, for uh, I mean, this is supposed to be a triple. Yep. Yeah, I mean, for a triple, it's pretty light. I, I expect a lot, I expect a much denser beer out of a triple. Um, so really, within the style, um, I'm just gonna get a seven. It's it's pretty standard for the field. Okay, so seven. Seven, seven, one, seven. I would two. say for for a triple, I would say, I would say seven even for the style. Me personally, maybe it's slightly higher than that. Um, maybe like a seven, one, seven, two. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. It's average to me. It's it's average. 
but for the style, it's definitely definitely average. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it's a C. I wouldn't be Low C. disappointed when ordering it because I ordered a triple and it tastes like a triple ish. Yeah. But then when you can get like Le Fin for the same price, just, I'd get Le Fin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unibrew anything's a really good pick anyway. So let's do one more. Let's Why do not? one more. How do you say no to that? Let's do a dealer's I choice. I never say though. no. Yeah, Let's Jesse, you pick. Jesse gets to pick because it's all his beer, and he yeah. was nice enough to bring it and share it with us today. I knew he was going to pick that one. Yeah. 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 I've <laughs> I knew been it. eyeing this one up all night. So that's that's going to be uh, – that trying one's going to find a place of is, prominence in your, uh, in your display. So yeah, Jesse like grabbed – my ceiling, oddly enough. He grabbed the Carbach You'll Shoot Your Eye Out from I'm trying Christmas, to figure out Christmas what story. kind of beer this is. I got I got dink Texas beer so oh, far in something. Ale brewed with cocoa nibs and spices. Oh god! Uh, now we're talking. Oh, All right, god. that's it's gonna be a Christmas Co- beer. Cocoa nibs is is a needs, buzzword. Needs, yeah, Dealer it needs to die. <laughs> yeah, he, he's spoken. Yeah. <laughs> spices, spices are what get me. Yeah. Beer with Who spices. could it? What I'm could it be? <laughs> you won't know until you open Everything's it. Everything's a spice. Right, so you really? want to ding <laughs> ding them on? Something. I want to ding them on. They're, when you oh, say they, ding, you mean nibs? positive or uh, negative? Negative, negative ding. Nibs, right? Negative ding on no, Texas, huh? That's a whole other story about hey, cocoa you nibs. you be careful, all right? They go Ted shoot. Cruz is going to jump your they ass They go shoot right me. Now. Some of their information is really hard to find. Oh. Like ABV, style. Like that should be not the biggest thing on the on the can or bottle, but it like should e- be on there easily to find. Easy, to, not on easy, the you know, easy to find, you know, and, and it's not a deal breaker. It's just a more or less a pain in the ass. Well, it's on Brewery DB, you know. Who yeah. doesn't have that at their fingertips all the time? <laughs> yeah. Well, the head on so. this one is beautiful. It is. So it's wow, definitely nice there. And white and, well, not white, but um, like a creamy. Off, like a cream creamy. off, yeah. Off white. There you go. So as, as the last. smells Christmassy. As the last beer, cocoa nibs and spices. Yeah. I definitely get spices on it. Yeah, it's a lot of good Christmas spice to it. Not getting a whole lot of cocoa nibs. I'm almost imagining like a so. gingerbready kind of beer right now yeah. from the nose. Yeah. Like on, a our, ginger on our bread trip nutmeg. down high ABV beers, this is uh, an 8.0. Oh, so every, surprise. Everyone we pick seems to be yeah. apart from the Tejas Lager. Well, everything's bigger in Texas. That's true, yeah. Everything's <laughs> bigger, bigger in Texas. Home. Yep. So, smell Christmas. I'm getting spices. Smell, yeah. Whatever that means. Spices. You just you smell no, the no cocoa nibs, but just spices. Yeah, I, yeah, I did take a little all. sneak sip, and there's not a lot of cocoa nib in it at all. No, Jeff's always Russian. Is there not cocoa Russian. but not nib, or is there just <laughs> not cocoa? Just nib? a lot of nips. <laughs> just a little cocoa nip. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting any chocolate or cocoa nib aspect to it. I'm getting spices. Lots of Christmas spice. Yeah, cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon, nutmeg. Dry, really it's, dry. It's, it is very dry. Yeah. But with the spices in there, this is – so, I mean, it's, it's you know, a Christmas theme. It's certainly yeah. what I would expect out of a winter exactly, a yeah. winter beer, which yeah. is when I'm really buying out of control because I like the darker, denser spice beers. More or less, beers. I'm assuming it's a winter a winter warmer is what I, I which think Which makes it sense is. now with probably the color yeah. of the can and then what they named the beer after a Christmas story. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, so it's, it's probably it's their, a winter warmer. It it's makes, their winter beer. It makes sense now with, you know, tasting it how, you know – this one also, nibs, also, nibs and spices. Yeah. This one yeah. also has an extreme lack of rain, clouds, and lightning, and I'm a little upset extreme. about that. Extreme? Yeah, oh, they've gone extreme with this one. This one has no rain, clouds, and no lightning. Oh. I'm not a fan of Christmas-style beers. I'm just going to throw that out there. How do you feel about pumpkin-style beers? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> After the first gimmicky? five or before oh, the first absolutely. five? Just like Christmas? Yeah, they're gimmicky. They're more gimmicky than Christmas beers. I'm a little disappointed. I'll be honest. A little disappointed. I agree. Mm. It's dry. Only spice, no cocoa, and nothing body-wise. Yeah. Light it's body. It's very. It's super very. Dry. Yeah. Cider body-ish. Mm. Yeah. It falls that. flat. Mm-hmm. On on, I'm sure it tastes better in Texas, but here in Orlando, Florida, <laughs> on March, whatever day it is, you know, it's it's kind of it was very it's very lackluster. I think that's probably the lowest of the five, in terms of score. I'm for gonna me. disagree. I'm actually a big fan of the winter beers. Are you? And the spice beers. Um, I mean, I'm disappointed it doesn't have the cocoa in there. But really, yeah. if I were to just pick this up, if they hadn't said anything about the cocoa and they just said this is a winter beer, 
I would I would like it. Yeah, I would really that's enjoy it. That's a good it. point, but I, I do think, and we've talked about this. If, if, don't put something on the label unless it exists in the yeah. taste. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we had that spaghetti western that tasted like <laughs> nothing like spaghetti. Yeah. Nothing. No spaghetti. No spaghetti. Negative spaghetti. That one's from Texas too, I think. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm. It's a little booze. I get like a little bit of booze, booziness to it. Not overwhelming, but it's it's. I think I would get taste more 8%. if it wasn't such a dry, spiced beer. It's so no. dry. It's like I don't have a problem with dry. I, I don't either. If it's if it's what I'm expecting, yeah. It's like oh, in yeah, this yeah. in this style with a high ABV, like eight mm. percent, it should have a a rounded out full finish like a sweet kind of make your mouth salivate kind of finish and it, it with all those spices it almost makes you the opposite yeah it's like giving me cotton mouth yeah hmm. <clears throat> i'll go first on the rating since everyone else has gone first i'm really gonna poo poo on this <laughs> keep it together chef <laughs> i don't know why that made me laugh so hard <laughs> oh god my, that hurt Six point seven, Ooh. below that's average. Real, that's a real poo poo. I poo pooed on it. That was a poo poo. I think that's the lowest score I've ever that given a beer on the show. That was the poop emoji. You yeah. just did an emoji. I'll put it in there. And, it's and going the in. Three legged lab was a bit of a disappointment for you too. So Carbox not seem to be doing it for you. No. Oh yeah. I look think, at that. but I think the three legged dog lab really hit me on like I like the style, which is biased, but yeah. it is what it is. I like stouts more than Christmas beers. I, I did like the three-legged dog a lot, though. I didn't. I wasn't. I gave it a run-of-the-mill score for an imperial stout, but I thought it was an enjoyable beer, nonetheless. Oh, they're all in. They're, every single one's enjoyable except for this one. You should try six. What six seven? So D plus. Highest, so the highest score that we've given so far has been to the pale lager. Yeah. Damn. No. <laughs> uh, Damn. True. I think I gave. No, you're right. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're right. I gave it that. Well, it makes but sense. It was brewed with, with rain clouds and lightning. Yeah, but and that a little hits, bit of Pancho But that, that hits on style. Style, I gave it a 9.5. Overall, it's, you know, it's a, a running the mill beer. Yeah, it's an average. It's a seven beer. But Pale Lager, it's a 9.5. So right. the highest, I think, score was so the. So for a Christmas beer, then, where does this one stand? But, oh. <laughs> I mean, for a Christmas Within beer, I think, it hit, I think it's. Me personally, it's a 6 7. Christmas beer, probably an 8.3. Okay. I've had better and I've had worse. Uh, okay, as a beer that I just just a beer, I'm gonna give it a seven three. I do think it's enjoyable. I just it's the dryness is getting to me a lot, and uh, when you called it a poo poo beer and I choked on it a little bit, I didn't enjoy it so much. So, <laughs> um, but it, I'm gonna give it like a seven three. But as a Christmas beer, I'm gonna also give it a seven three. Hmm. Okay. So I think it doesn't change knowing the style. I just think it, it's run of the mill for both. Um, there's definitely better Christmas beers, a lot better Christmas beers, yeah. um, with a lot more flavor and a lot better finish and a body. And, and I think it's run of the mill for both. I think it's yeah, C minus, bottom of average. Yeah, just what are you thinking? Uh, I'm disagreeing with you guys because good. I, I like it. I um, the lights came I'm. I mean, for a Christmas beer, the the one thing it really detracts for me is is as you guys have pointed out, it's selling something that it isn't necessarily. Yeah. But if I had if I had just had this plopped in front of me and didn't know what to expect, I'd be giving this a nine point five. It's really good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's just not what they're selling it to be. Right. Yeah. I could agree with that. It's not an it's not an unenjoyable beer. No, no. I mean, I would, I would if someone gave it to me again, I would drink it, but. I it's, probably it'd be the probably the second to last thing I would order from what we've drank. For for me, it's first easily as good as that lager. The, the last and triple. Yeah. I thought that was an, at first. I, I thought it was enjoyable. I'm not. I just don't like Belgians. Unless it's Unibrew. I don't Dave, know. Dave, just turn off the podcast. Don't listen anymore. <laughs> Mike hates Belgians. <laughs> More German, but I also hate Belgians. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at least, I, at least I can appreciate that they're simple. I, I am. I, oh, don't even get me. I appreciate Belgians, but there's a whole thing about Belgians that. This is how we get over an hour every episode. By the there way, there you go, yeah. Jesse. Well, Jesse, what are you thinking? What are you thinking of a score? You say you really liked it. Yeah, I said nine point five. Nine point five. Yeah, for for that style. Okay, what about you personally? Nine five as well. Um. Maybe a nine overall, because okay. okay. there, there's still other styles that I'd like better. So, okay. see, and I, I love that. I like that. 
everybody pal everybody's palate is a little bit different yeah. you know yeah. for us something that we don't necessarily like is something that somebody else loves so it's it's cool that's yeah. what i love about craft beer I was, yeah i mean this this has been awesome I, I really enjoyed you know trying beers from texas man so much appreciated no Yeehaw. problem Yeehaw. so J- <laughs> jeff hollywood hollywood plug it anywhere it's time to plug it plug it anywhere we no, got plugs no plugs no plugs i don't wow. got no plugs today wow oh yeah i do <laughs> by the time you listen five dollar burger mondays by the time, <laughs> by the, i think i plugged everything wob could possibly plug on the last episode you did so, 20 minutes uh, later yeah uh, uh, something it was 20 have, minutes of plugs i'm not plugging wob today sorry wob you got your spotlight last week um i have just come back from hunapu day and it was awesome <laughs> It was so much fun, and I have a bunch of hunapu that I get to drink, and we're going to probably do an episode where we drink it, so yep. keep tuned for that. Uh, keep tuned for some other episodes. We have some cool stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, I don't know when we're going to finally do the battle of us infusing beers, but I think that's going to be really It's fun. coming up. I think it will be af- after battle. the uh, Sculpin episode. We do have a, a Sculpin horizontal taste test, yep. which is... Uh, that's I the think, next episode. Are we the ones who, who just coin that term or does that term already exist no idea because we're just doing every flavor of sculpin side by side so it's gonna be a really cool episode that's a lot of flavors uh only there's only four habanero pineapple grapefruit, grapefruit and then fruit, regular sculpin and regular and watermelon and, wa- and watermelon i don't i can't get watermelon <laughs> i don't think there is no, water no it's dorado dorado there is, yeah i've had it a watermelon sculpin i think it's water i think it's watermelon dorado i think so too but um but we're doing a vertical uh, horizontal. horizontal almighty excel sheet here that's next that's next episode whatever episode number this is so yeah keep tuned at the bar podcast hashtag hollywood <laughs> jesse sure it's time to jump in the prius so I'm a, plug I'm it anywhere greedy guy so i'm gonna plug myself my blog uh used hairs used bottles uh find it at bottlecollection.net. uh if you're looking on facebook just look up used hair you'll see it when, used hair. Now, used what hair. what is your blog? I know we kind of touched on, it, but what is it necessarily like about? You know, you collect bottles. <clears throat> so, I'm trying to go back and forth between stories of collecting the bottles, trying to talk about you know how I get the bottles back, you know, traveling with the bottles, uh, the challenges involved with trying to display 1,400 bottles and cans, things like that. Um, you know, definitely trying to find my audience at this point, find what they're looking for. What I'm yeah. getting now is they're more interested in the uh, the stories involved in getting them. But I'd, I'd really like to talk about the, you know, difficulties in displaying 1,400 bottles do you have, of beer. Do you have a maximum number that you have in mind for displaying, or are you just going to keep going? I'm just going to keep going. What does so, your wife think about that? Uh, she's all right with it. I, <laughs> I have a restricted space. Okay. So, I think eventually you, know, you should just build a... A shed in the backyard out of bottles and cans uh, you know my my lifelong dream is to find somebody who's opening a craft brewery who needs you know decorations and then just display my beers in their craft brewery that would be you know really that would cool. be really cool they're opening a couple we know of a couple of people did opening you, up soon yeah you know this is a, a, not a plug or anything but just now that i said that shed thing do you know heineken actually made a bottle that that they link together to make sustainable Buildings. housing yes it's, they're bottles that can be used as bricks, and they literally fit into each other to stack as bricks to build houses out of. I saw that, that was cool. the Heineken experience. Yeah, yeah very cool. That was good. Cool. So check out your blog, right? Yeah, check out my blog. I'll, I'll put all the, the little information on the, Mike, on the video. Dirty Mike, plug it anywhere. I'm going to plug in at the bar podcast because <laughs> I'm a greedy son of a bitch. Because if you're listening now, <laughs> you're you don't already know about it. W- I already hooked you in. We have a lot of good content. We have a lot up. of good content. We are actually behind, mainly because it's my fault. Uh, we have a lot of cool stuff coming out. We have Berman County coming out, or has, is already out. You should check it out. We have the Sculpin next episode, the horizontal. We have the, the, you know, the, the conditioning of a porter coming up. We have. Uh, the list goes on of things that we either have done or going to do or doing or we're planning or talking about or talking about. Um, we have some events coming up. We're going to try and get involved with. We have shirts. We do. Yeah. We have some gear. We're getting, we're out. getting some gear coming out. I think one of them says um, waiting for the hand dryer to go off so you can take really loud dumps. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, yes. I'm gonna, some I, of that stuff should go to, you know, the very first listener to be on the podcast. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you one. We'll get you one. But I, I want to make a, a list. I'm greedy. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I want to make a list of quotes that we've all said, and you guys get to pick the quote that makes the first shirt. That would be go. pretty cool. All right, let's get the yeah, let's get the yeah. listeners involved in because that was definitely one of them. <laughs> it never made it to the show. That was <laughs> quote, I'm gonna, I'm on gonna that. poo poo on the sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Backstory on that quote: uh, when we were at coasters at the beer event, I had to use the restroom and decided that I would text Mike <laughs> that exact story because we're in a very small bathroom and I was waiting for people to use the hand dryer so that I could continue my poop. <laughs> so. <laughs> And I know we've all been there, so let's not blow yeah, let's it up. Not, in the yeah, let's not make fun of them about you it. You all know that you've been there. We've waited. We've all waited. I just picture that like <laughs> that that meme where somebody's like, "Hold the lines, <laughs> hold the lines," and then, "All right, go." <laughs> like, I mean, I was sitting at the table sipping on Canteon, and my phone goes off. It's from Hollywood. I'm like. What does he want? And that's literally what it said. <laughs> Waiting for the hand dryer to go, go off to take really loud dumps. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to, yeah, I don't even know where the hell I'm at at this point. So <laughs> we're going to end the show there. Thanks for, again, for <laughs> thanks again for listening and watching. And until next time, cheers. Hollywood, peace out. <laughs>